And this will be uh, part two, which I'm going to talk about the government UID system. Uh, they need a 2D barcode. Uh, part one, I kind of showed you how to make some 2D barcodes, or at least acquire them um, for free. And in the uh, the government property world and the Depart Department of Defense and military, there's a typically mill standard 130 is a call out for marking parts. And most manufacturers have a um, military cage code or a defense cage code or just a manufacturer's cage code. Usually it's a five digit number uh, entity and you can look those up online. If you're in, you're in that arena, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, then that's a different conversation. But mostly um, you can do a Google search for MIL space assist and it will usually bring up this quick search and then you can search for document ID 130 and get a copy of it and when you click on that you get the uh, downloaded uh, mill standard N1 uh, 130 rev n change 1 and I'm, I'm down on page 70 here uh, of the it's a 71 page document let me back up one page this is the best one I'm going to show you construct number two today and I'm not going to show every single type of different UID actually let me back up here and see if I can find a copy of what we're talking about so and that's a pretty complex looking label let me see if I can find a simpler label so you know this is an example here where you've got the UID and, and a 2D barcode uh, embedded with the part number the vendor and the lot number and sometimes they have human readable but again UIDs you can make them real real small or real big um, the more data you have to put in there the bigger that square gets uh, the mill standard will call out that each little square inside that dot so each you know on and or on or off square a little inside there needs to be uh, no smaller than 0 0.0075 inches or seven and a half thousandths of an inch and that's the smallest size you can be and the biggest is 0 0.025 or 25 thousandths um, but rather than try to measure each square when you set these labels up or print them um, a lot of these matrices especially uh, depending on your your part number size and your serial number and whether or not you're using cage or duns and some of that stuff they tend to be about 24 by 24 uh, dots so you can multiply that out and you get something like, uh, I don't know, 240 to 600. I'll get those exact numbers. I'll put them in the, the video here. But what I like to do is just say, okay, you know, so that, that's telling you it needs to be between a quarter inch and a half an inch. So you can take the entire square and measure it. And you can, that's a pretty wide tolerance there. So you don't need to measure the little itty bitty square. Just take the aggregate of squares and say, okay, that's well within that range. Um, there are some caveats to that in that you know bigger is better especially if you're in a harsh environment um, but if you can't fit it on your part you can certainly go down to seven and a half or eight thousandths but you want to be in the sort of the 15 to 20 or 20 to 25 range um, I know that makes a bigger footprint but obviously um, if you scrape the you know, if you scrape the label or you scrape it you know for for a same size scrape um, a bigger a bigger square will take out less, less pixels um, and again, these things can read up to with 40% of the pixels uh, destroyed. But if you have to make it real small and you have a few scratches, that has a greater chance of taking out the, the readability with a, with a barcode. So if you're in a harsh environment, they recommend 20 thousandths or bigger. If you're normal, 12 thousandths or bigger. And then if you're just in a light industrial, you know, um, office environment or something like that, I guess you'd, you'd get down to like 10 thousandths. But you, you pretty much want to try to run about 20. So that's just a good um, gauge for you. So I wanted to get into the construct here, um, and so let me page down. I was on page PDF page 63. Come on, catch up with me. And so they kind of do this uh, 17V or 12V. 17V is for cage people. If you're going to put your cage on the back of it, if you're 12V is for your Dunn's number or Dunn and Bradstreet number, depending on what your organization is. A lot of people just go with cage, especially with their military provider. Um, so there'll be you know. Uh, cage, I mean, uh, yeah, signifier for cage. There's a little intro out there I'm going to get to. A little signifier for cage, you put your cage number in. There's a signifier for 1P, that's for a new part being released. 
and then you put your part number in and then an S and then your serial number and that's kind of the way um, that stuff gets loaded in for the UID I know when you upload it to the registry it's a completely different format but uh, you don't need a 2D barcode to upload stuff to the registry you need a 2D barcode on the part so let me see if I got a good definition I do it's UIDlaser.com. I'm, I'm going off of here, and here's an example. I mean, obviously that's what the barcode looks like, but you can see they got these leading, you know, bracket, parentheses, um, greater than symbol or less than. That's greater than there, and then they got this RS character. Though it's a hidden ASCII code character, and then the coding, 12. Most um, I tend to use six because there's construct number 6, construct 12, and construct 5. 6 is the best one for cage code, so it'll be an 06. You'll see it in there. Then there's another ASCII code called a GS code, and then usually it's just um, 17V, but you're putting your, your manufacturer in here. So 17V in your cage, and then you have another GS, so just an indicator that's breaking the, the tab field, so another disc delimiter in there. Um, and then usually I have the part number. Here they don't have it, but you put the part number, another ASCII code, and then at the end you cap it off with an RS and an ET. So these these guys, these RS, GS, and ETs, they do not print when you scan the barcode into something like Notepad um, or Word. Um, so don't get tricked by that. Those need to be in there, and you need an ASCII um, scanning code delimiter. Um, uh, readout uh, software and you can get that kind of free let's see where can you get it free ID automation has a free one and so you'll you'll load their software and uh, when you boot it up and you, you you read the scan it'll read these and it will give you the codes in between there too it'll give you what it reads when if you're putting in in a notepad but below it there's two boxes and the second boxes will show you all that all the strings are in there it's important to have those strings uh, but that's a common mistake that people mean so this is just a, a, an example of a code. Uh, let me give you a different a can't example that's more representative of uh, what you'll see in, in normal um, American production. So I did, let's see, yeah, all right. And I'm putting, um, so it, it, it's again, it's the, the parentheses, the bracket, the greater than, and then this is my code for an RS. Um, I guess I should do non-printable characters right away. So non-printable characters, this one, uh, it's, you know, GS and RS and EOT. I know they got them down here in a thing. So non-printable characters are like your escapes and your line feeds and stuff like that are in there too. I know that, uh, uh, let's see, enter is in there, carriage return, that's a 13. A line, uh, HT is a tab, which is a 9. Uh, EOT is a four, so these are these are things you can either use to tab between fields, but in our case here, we're using them for these RS, GS, and ET codes. So uh, GS is 29, RS is 30. So this is under BarcodeSoft.com. Um, I've got a non-printable. That's what this web page is from. Let me go back to my my Notepad document. So 030 is that RS code. So it's a squiggly D030. That's that that in this particular ID automation. Um, software gets you that other people might use an ampersand uh, pound four or I'm sorry pound 30 and then the colon but uh, most you have to figure out what uh, what barcode you're going to get it from but uh, in this case so that do 30 squiggly do 30 is your just a, the non-printed ASCII code and then I've got an 06 that's setting up macro number six and that's the most common one uh, for production and then it's got the, the GS after it, which is the squiggly DO29. Right there. So then, uh, I'm sorry, not without the V. V17 is the indicator for a cage. If you want to do DUNS, it's V12. And then I put a, a five-digit cage code. And hopefully, like I said, nobody's got this cage code, but it's 99999. I don't think anybody has that in the real world. And then here's just another... DO29 separator 1P is your indicator saying this is a new part going out the door. I know they have other P's if you're upgrading or retrofitting or changing your parts. I put a part number 1234567-8. So that's 
so that's in there and then I've got the squiggly DO29 which is another common breaker and then it's S for serial number because this happens to be a serialized product I know there's other ones for lots but let's just deal with the serialized world and then my particular serial number here is 987654 and then I've got a, a squiggly DO30 which is your RS these were all GS's on the 29 RS for 30 and then the end of end of string the dreaded D004 so if you tried to put all this into one of those flat linear barcodes forget it it would be huge and it doesn't read those DO29 non ASCII's so again um, you can go into the if I copy this and I put it into one of those free online ones that you saw earlier in the video they are going to print out these were over in my Excel Word, the ASCII, ASCII whatever, you know, that's a uh, word. I was trying to do a UID when I did these. You don't have to do UIDs. You can put uh, text in there or like I had examples of ops. And uh, the D013 uh, squiggly is like the enter key and the DO9 is a tab. I mentioned that. I think escape is DO04. I'm not quite sure, but if you're trying to manipulate uh, entries into a uh, an access database or something like that so let me again do the barcode scan here in case i break these into a couple of videos this is just a scan on my phone come on phone downloaded app i forget who it's by sorry i don't remember that focusing sucks on it but there it is so you can see it's not printing those squiggly d's um, so i would need different software but that's the basic uh, basic idea of what a scanned uid product barcode for military defense use looks like.